Hello, my name is Jay Malavia, and welcome on to my TED Talk on how to boost your performance. So what if I told you that every time someone called you smart, you just got a little dumber? What if I told you that every time your teacher complimented your intelligence before a test, you would do worse? Yes, your reaction is the same as mine, confused. Doesn't this abstract phenomenon seem so ironic? How can this work? So, there was a test by Claudia Muller in Columbia University in 1998. She took a large group of fifth graders and split them in part into two, two groups with work ethic based reinforcement and merit based reinforcement. Then she gave them three different types of puzzles easy, medium, and hard. What she found was that the kids that were given hard work based reinforcement spent more time on the harder puzzles. They had an overall better performance, and they enjoyed the activities. That's key. On the contrary, the kids that were given merit-based performance tended to do worse, spent more time on the easier puzzles, and did not enjoy the activities. So to understand those results, we first need to understand what is our locus of control. So your locus of control is your beliefs on based on whether things happen to you or you cause actions to happen. So let's look at these two people right here. The kid in the green is pointing inside. He is pointing internally because he knows the actions that happen around him are caused by him. He is the sole influencer of what happens for him. On the contrary, the person in the blue is pointing around. He feels that his environment is influencing the actions around him. So to give an example, Pretend these two, green and blue, were in a race. Let's say green won the race. If blue lost, blue would say, I lost because I didn't have the Nike Vaporflies. I didn't have the best shoes. I, I wasn't running in the optimal equipment. On the contrary, if green lost, he would say, oh, I wasn't running in longer strides. I wasn't doing good enough to reach my maximum potential. So let's start with some examples. My sister got, is an Ivy League um, accepted 4.6 GPA student. However, whenever compared to me, she would always say, Jay, you are lucky. You don't have to work hard for success. I work very hard to get, I work very hard to get good grades. You are lucky and born with natural smarts. Little did I know this is what made her so great. She had an intrinsic motivation. She knew that she is the sole cause for greatness. She knew that she could beat me just by working hard. She didn't need merit. She didn't need any other outside sources because she had herself. Let's look at the poster boy of intrinsic motivation, Kobe Bryant. Now what's Kobe Bryant most known for? Work ethic. Kobe Bryant is always known for his work ethic and been applauded for it, just like the five-year-olds in our study before. Kobe Bryant, like the five-year-olds, has been applauded based on his work ethic. And what's happened? He's excelled, he's succeeded, he's done well. Kobe Bryant has said, my hands are bigger, but they're not massive. I was quick, but not insanely quick. I was fast, but not ridiculously fast. But I studied the game and I enjoyed it. Again, Kobe Bryant working hard, getting reinforced for working hard, is enjoying what he's doing, just like our fifth graders from Ms. Mueller's study. So, how can we be like these two examples? How can we emulate our lives to also take what we've learned into example and become like these two people? So what I want everyone to do listening right now is close your eyes. That's shut. Now, I want you to imagine a room, a pristine clean room, however, with one shirt on the ground. The room, not clean anymore because of that one shirt. Now I want you to acknowledge the fact that you can go up there and pick up that shirt. I want you to imagine yourself going, picking up that shirt, hanging it in the cupboard, and closing the room, closing the cupboard. Now I want you to look at that pristine, clean room. I want you to acknowledge that the reason that you had success was because you decided to take the time into making the change. Now I want you to repeat this over and over. It doesn't matter if you're doing it with sports like Kobe Bryant, academics like my sister, just repeat it. You will find success if you follow this slow and easy process, which you can slowly build up on. So, I want to leave you all with my formula for success. 
So we can all agree that work ethic plus, per plus merit equals performance. Now, work ethic plus understanding equals merit. So if we do some simple algebraic substitution, we can know that 2 multiplied by work ethic plus understanding equals performance. This is, what my, this is why my sister and Kobe Bryant outperform me all the time. Because it doesn't matter how well I understand it on the first, second, third, fourth, fifth time. They will continue to work hard and they will put in the effort. And no matter how well I'm or good I am at understanding it, they'll continue to get better performance than me. So I ask you to look at this, look at this short and small formula and try to use it in yourself. Adapt an internal locus of control and understand that you are responsible for what happens in your life. I want to thank you all for coming to my TED Talk. Have a nice day.